So right off the bat, I'm gonna warn you that today's video was pretty frustrating for me to make. I was testing autopilot on some back roads again, and I've been noticing that any time that the car comes to the top of a hill and the road either bears to the left or the right, if it loses sight of the lane lines, it has a really hard time figuring out what to do next. So today you'll see that I have to take over multiple times on the back road that I was testing today. And this is a route that I've driven hundreds of times before. So if the car was building up any type of residual memory or learning from these type of situations, you would think that it would be able to appropriately tackle some of these curves. So I'll show you the footage today and let me know what you think down in the comments below. I've been watching a lot of the full self-driving beta videos and the cars are definitely making really nice progress and it's really amazing some of the maneuvers that they're able to do at this point. But for the rest of us that have regular full self-driving, it's frustrating to say the least because our cars are nowhere near that point yet in terms of how they're performing. And to be quite honest, I don't even feel comfortable using autopilot in most cases on most back roads because of the type of footage that I'm gonna show you today. So we'll jump right into it and take a look and I'll give you some examples of what I'm talking about. So this particular stretch of road I have talked about and shown in previous videos. It offers a good mix of road conditions that really challenge full self-driving, uh, but particularly today we're going to be looking at the top of hills and how the car handles those turns. So right up ahead you'll see that the road is coming to a peak and it's going to curve to the left. The car doesn't really react to the curve in the road and almost drives into the embankment, so you'll see I pull left, which automatically disengages autopilot and then we proceed down the road after I reactivate autopilot. There's another similar turn up ahead where the road again is gonna to bear to the left. And you'll see that once again, I do have to take over. I pull left on the steering wheel, which automatically disengages autopilot. So these are two prime examples where you really have to babysit the car and it makes it really difficult to trust autopilot and get comfortable using this system when you have these types of scenarios where it's hard to tell whether the car is gonna be able to handle it or drive into the embankment. So I do turn around to go ahead and try these curves in the opposite direction. The first one, the car has no issues, only because the elevation of the road is relatively stable. It is able to track the lane lines throughout the curve, so you see it's able to take that without any problems whatsoever. The second curb is much more challenging though, so we are coming to the apex of a hill. The road is gonna curve swiftly to the right and pitch downward. So as soon as this happens, the car loses total sight of the lane lines. You'll see it actually cross over the double yellow line and then autopilot basically freaks out. So you'll see the four ways get turned on, the red steering wheels on the screen there. And I was honestly curious just to see what would happen at this point. So there weren't any other cars around me and I just let everything kind of play out. So you'll see if I had let it, the car probably would have come to a complete stop until I disengaged autopilot and then took over. So I make these kind of videos not to complain about autopilot, but rather to draw attention to where the current state of the software is at and showcase the limitations of this program. And clearly, if it hasn't been established by now, I'm definitely a Tesla supporter. I believe in the company's mission and I'm really happy with the progress that's been made so far with autopilot, but I'm also realistic and I think it's also important to be critical of this software and not blindly trust it. And clearly, based on the results that I'm getting with some of the driving you're seeing today, you cannot trust autopilot at this point in time. And I think that's really important to understand, especially for those of you who may not have a Tesla at this point or are considering buying full self-driving. So if you like these types of videos where I'm really critically taking a look at autopilot and evaluating its performance, make sure you hit the like button so I know to continue to upload these kinds of videos. So you probably can't trust autopilot 100% right now, but what you can put your reliance in is definitely Tesla's stability control. So you can see I'm trying this curve again at about 40 miles an hour, which is the posted speed limit on the road. Now the road is covered in powder from dried salt. So as I pull the wheel to the left, I do lose traction, but the stability control kicks in and you'll see the wheel bounce back and forth a little bit until we're again moving in a straight direction. So this is just a little example of how even though autopilot can potentially put you in some unsafe situations, the car definitely makes it very easy to regain control should you have to take over and react very quickly. So as I mentioned earlier, I make these videos to bring awareness to the current state of Tesla's autopilot and full self-driving. And on that note, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about full self-driving and getting a more in-depth opinion on whether or not it's worth the $10,000 price point at this point, I did make a video on that recently. So I'll link that above here and you can go ahead and check that out if you want to learn a little bit more about full self-driving. And spoiler from 
probably you can tell from what you're seeing here today that as of right now, I don't think that this full self-driving package is anywhere near worth $10,000. Tesla has done a really incredible job so far with what they've been able to develop, but is that really worth the babysitting that you have to do when you're using this software? And if you're gonna get autopilot standard with the car anyway, in my opinion right now, this full self-driving package really isn't worth the price point that it's set at. Now that could change in a couple months, especially as the full self-driving beta expands to more people, uh, which I'm hopefully uh, looking forward to being able to get my hands on sometime soon in the near future. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you hit the like button and let me know what you think in the comments down below, especially in terms of how autopilot is performing and if you've had a different experience with your Tesla. But as always, thank you for taking the time to watch today and I'll see you in the next one.